right, glory to God, bless the name of the Lord, friends and families, thank you all for coming to May 2023, Biblical Steps to Overcome. From Hero Smarts Ministries, thank you for joining us. We are going to be getting through the BSTO right now, so you're welcome to pull up to the table, get a copy of your Bible, a copy of your notes, and let us study together. So this is um, Land Alluded from Hero Smart, and we are going to be walking through biblical steps to overcome bad habits, which we call BSTO in this ministry by the grace of God. It's an outreach of this ministry designed to encourage brothers and sisters in the Lord. So if you are a Christian, this is going to be for you. And our punchline scripture is going to be Romans chapter 8 and from verse 1, which, is, which says, There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Because the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. So no matter what you're going through, there is no condemnation for you. Rest assured that the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus is available for activation anytime. That scripture is going to be Romans chapter 8 from verse 1 to verse 2. So today we're going to be talking about what bad habits are and what negative addictions are. And bad habits and negative addictions can be used and are going to be used interchangeably all through this presentation. We're going to talk about why we need to come out of those kind of things, the reason people get addicted, the path to and the path out of negative addictions by the grace of God. So what are addictions? Um, a dictionary defines addictions as being the state of being compulsively committed to a habit or to a practice. To something that is psychologically or physically habit forming, such as narcotics, to such an extent that its cessation causes severe trauma. Now, the dictionary got some, they, they made some really poignant points over there through that uh, definition, but a lot of times people just want to restrict addictions to narcotics alone, but that's, that's not necessarily true. I mean, the Bible says we have all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Every action of disobedience and rebellion against God which is practiced repeatedly is going to be one form of addiction or another. So, but anyway, the there are certain points that this dictionary's definition brings out which are consistent with the the word of God as well. The Bible says in Romans chapter 6 and verse 16 it says, "Don't you know that when you offer yourselves to someone as obedient slaves, you are slaves to the one you obey, whether you are slaves to sin which leads to death, or to obedience which leads to righteousness. Now, Romans chapter 6 and verse 16 over there talks about um, a dichotomy uh, of studies, if you will. It talks about being enslaved to sin and being enslaved to righteousness. Well, that's what addiction is if you're enslaved especially to sin or to a bad habit. That's what, what addiction is going to be all about. Well, and that's the reason this graphic is going to be on the board or on the screen um, in front of you right in here. It shows a picture of uh, somebody being shackled. They really want to get free from something, but they're not able to get free. Why? Because they're shackled to whatever is binding them. Well, that's what addictions are. But thankfully, there's another way to be shackled to what's going to be right. Uh, Apostle Paul calls it in Romans chapter 6, slaves to obedience, which is going to lead to righteousness. So we normally do an exercise walking through this presentation. We're going to uh, reflect on certain points. I think the first thing we are going to talk about right now is be shackled to righteousness. Hallelujah. That's going to be one sure way to be unshackled to disobedience and bad habits. Be shackled to righteousness. So if you're watching with me right now, please go ahead and type that in to the chat for me. I am shackled to righteousness. I'm shackled to obedience right now. I am a slave of obedience. No longer a slave of disobedience, but a slave of obedience by the grace of God. Well, that's what addictions are. And then we are going to move on right now to talk about uh, why we need to come out of it. Uh, we saw some really, really critical statistics over here a few years ago, which I would like to relieve on the board as well. Uh, we see that thousands of people die every year. Uh, 600, over $600 billion is spent every year to treat some addiction problems in the United States alone. 56% of divorce cases, 
um, are caused by addictions. And addictions steal people's peace and shatters aspirations and dreams. The spirit of disobedience in the air causes it, and most importantly, it's going to send people to hell. So it's not something we want to play with. Recursive actions of treason? No, no, you don't play with it. You, you, you get rid of it as quickly as possible. Uh, why? Revelation chapter 21 and verse 8, it says, But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic arts, the idolaters, and all liars, they will be consigned to the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. Okay? So we don't want to play with it because we know that, well, it can send people to hell. But, you know, lots of people want to get free of bad habits, and they don't know how to do that. Well, the reason for that is there is a spirit of disobedience in the air which causes the uh, the situation. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 1 talks about it. It says, As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live. When you followed the ways of this world and of the rulers of the kingdom in the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. Now, did you see over here that there is a spirit who is responsible for disobedience, right? And that spirit is in the air. It's in the air that you breathe, <laughs> potentially the air that you move around with in your home or at the grocery store. There is a spiritual force over there which is trying to push people into disobedience. So what are we going to do to that spiritual force? Now, what we're going to do to that spiritual force is to engage in some other counteracting spiritual strategy. And that counteracting spiritual strategy we are going to engage in will be positive spiritual strategies as well. We're going to use positive spiritual strategies to pull down negative spiritual forces. If you're watching with me right now, please type that down for me by the grace of God. Utilize positive spiritual strategies to pull down negative spiritual forces. That's the way it's going to work. You're not going to try to defeat negative spiritual strategies by human philosophies or, you know, trying to be nice or trying to be good. you got to engage in positive spiritual strategies. So type it in for me. Positive spiritual strategies will pull down and overcome negative spiritual forces. Hallelujah. And that's what the BS steel is. So but before we get into all the nuts and bolts of that, let's go ahead and talk about why people get addicted. Now, people get addicted predominantly, especially in this generation, because of entertainment. Why? Because 2 Timothy chapter 3 from verse 1 to 5 talks about it. It says, in the last times or in the last days, people are going to be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, unholy, ungrateful, without love, unforgiven, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of good, treacherous treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Now, God is telling me to bring attention over here. See over here, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Now, this one is trying to replace the love of God. You see that? Lovers of pleasure in place of love for God. Why? Because they think that the pleasure and the entertainment on the outside will satisfy. But God is the only thing that can satisfy. Having a form of godliness but denying its power. Another point we've got to realize over here that he takes the power of God to be godly. Hallelujah. Godliness is not just about having a form of godliness. It is having the power of godliness. And that's what's going to set people free from their sins. But predominantly the reason people get addicted it's because of this love for pleasure over here. Entertainment. And it's been like that ever since the, the book of Genesis. In Genesis chapter 3, in verse 6, the Bible talks about the woman. Um, our mother Eve, she saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye. And also desirable for gaining wisdom. So she ate it because of that. Wow, pleasing to the eye. Lost of the eyes. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life. The reason for addictions. And that's the reason we have the picture of roller coaster over here. And what's very prevalent in this generation, it's entertainment. Entertainment on steroids. It's entertainment in and out. And, well, entertainment by themselves wouldn't be 
sin or sinful but if I live my life loving to be entertained and that's what I think about then I am getting close to what we call the path to addictions so please bookmark that point entertainment love for pleasure rather than lovers of God is the reason people slide into uh, negative addictions so how do we come out of it well Titus chapter 3 and verse 3 lets us know this is the snapshot scripture that talks about a spiritual strategy to come out of addictions it says at one time we too were foolish disobedient deceived and enslaved by all kinds of passions and pleasures now the scripture identifies the path to negative addictions over here and we call that path FDDA the path has certain milestones on it foolishness disobedience deception and addiction or enslavement in this particular verse of scripture so that's the path to it people don't people don't just just don't get addicted overnight they've been traveling down a path and the path started with foolishness and it went to disobedience and deception and finally addictions over there but thankfully through the revelation of the Holy Spirit we can identify another path out of it which the path out of addiction is going to be the opposite of the milestones over here the opposite of addiction is going to be repentance opposite of deception is going to be truth opposite of disobedience is going to be obedience and opposite of foolishness is going to be wisdom so we call that path the Arto path or the Arto strategy so again if you're watching with me please go ahead and type that in for me use RTOW to overcome FDDA hallelujah Arto strategy overcome FDDA literally Arto that's the reason we have the picture of a tow truck over here to kind of like jolt people's memories so they don't forget it Arto strategy to overcome FDDA bless the name of the Lord all right so let's delve deep deeper into the spiritual strategy right now which we call what's the way in well the way in into addictions is what we call the FDDA path and that means foolishness disobedience deception and addiction what is foolishness foolishness is not necessarily sin it just means a life of no structure or a life of resistance to structure wow never said that before type that in for me foolishness is going to be equivalent to resisting structure as well you're watching with me right now type it in for me as well don't resist structure structure is the way to wisdom don't resist structure foolishness is the way to addictions and then if people that don't get structure into their lives and they're gonna see well disobedience is gonna be the consequence of it and then disobedience which is treason in this situation which is rebellion and sin is going to come attendant with it what we call de deceptions which are going to be strongholds of lies and deceptions in people's hearts and when people don't do something to it then here comes addictions right now which is going to be habitual treason so it's going to be deception sin disobedience deception sin disobedience and it comes it forms a vortex for people so what is foolishness well, let's look at the the, the 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 Bible way out. Firstly, to answer that before we answer that question, well, the way out from the biblical standpoint is going to be the Arto strategy, which starts from repentance, which is going to be equivalent to making a U-turn, and then truth of the Word of God, which is going to be overcoming deceptions in my heart, and obedience, which is going to be milestone number three, and then wisdom which is going to be discipleship strategies and he has to be in this order if I repent and I do not do something to my negative belief system I'm gonna find myself getting to repent two weeks down the road three weeks down the road four weeks down the road why because deception Lord of God deception on earth is like a ticking time bomb <laughs> I never said that before somebody write that down for me deception on earth is like a time bomb it's just a question of time you're gonna find yourself back in needing to repent again why because there's a wrong belief system over there write it down for me deception on earth is like a time bomb it's just ticking boom 
but, but it's just a question of time, it's going to come back up again. That's the reason we got to graduate right now to the truth milestone. What does the truth of the word say about my situation? That truth of the word of God is going to unearth that deception and you neutralize the bomb like that. Glory to God. Type that in for me. Neutralize the bomb with truth. Hallelujah. You just cancel that bomb over there. They got people that are all around uh, security forces that specialize in neutralizing bombs. And if they see that there's a, there's a potential bomb over here, they can tell people, hey, stay away from there. I know we got special people trained on how to neutralize bombs. And they're going to go over there with their special equipment and they're going to put something over there, defuse that bomb, and that bomb is not going to hurt anybody anymore. Well, you got to do that to yourself. Neutralize the bomb of deception by truth. Hallelujah. How do we do that? Well, just hang on. We're going to talk about it. All right. So let's get into the deep details of the way in right now. The way in is going to be equivalent to foolishness. It starts with this. How many people did this when they were really, when they were young? Well, playing in the sand all day long or playing with your toys or just hanging around, uh, not necessarily living a life of structure, but there is more to life than this. How many people are thinking about what the Father is thinking about? The creator of this grand universe over here, you know, is thinking about, well, what can I do right now to reconcile people to myself? Look at how big this universe is. How, how many people feel the, feel the pains in the Father's heart? And all, but all I do every morning is just wake up and think about, well, what can I do right now to make myself feel good? What about trying to do something, something to make the Father feel good? <laughs> Write that in for me. Start thinking like a mature person. Don't think like a child anymore. Well, that's what foolishness is gonna gonna try to do to people. Think like little children. It's just all about themselves. You know, I'm just trying to play in the sand. No. Well, that's the path to foolishness. That's the path to addiction. So type it in for me over there. Think about the father's pains. How many people know that God has pains in his heart? <laughs> You read the Old Testament, you're going to see lots of times how God is going to be in pain, so to say, because of the rebellion of the nation of Israel. Are you thinking about what's actually painful to the Father? What's the Father trying to do? Well, He's going to make you live a life of structure if you start thinking like that a little bit. But anyway, foolishness is the path to addictions. And when people don't do something to it to put structure into their lives or they keep resisting structure, well, guess what happens? Disobedience is going to be the cause of it. And that's the reason this graphic is over here talking about how Adam and Eve try to cover themselves with fig leaves when they fell in the scene. Why? They fell in the scene because they didn't have a life of structure. They were foolish in talking to the devil instead of casting the devil out. Why are you talking to the devil? You cast him out now. But all of us have sinned, the Word of God says in Romans chapter 3 and verse 23, For all of us have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But we can't stay in sin. We were not created to stay in a vortex of sin. Tell somebody that. Type it down for me. You were not created to stay in sin. You can come out of it. Why? Because that sin is trying to clip your glory. Hallelujah. So why don't you want to get your glory back? God didn't create humanity to be covered with fig trees and fig leaves forever. No, we can come out of it. Sin is not your property. We wrote in the Overcomer's Secret, if you're coming through our program called the ODP, that sin is the devil's property. The Word of God says that iniquity was first found in the devil, not in anybody else. Sin was found in the devil, not found in you. It's not your property. So what are you doing with the devil's property? Return the devil's property back to him. Oh, but I'm trying to do that. I don't know how to do that. Well, that's the reason we're talking through this presentation right now. To encourage one another in the Lord to return the property of the devil back to the devil. Well, but if people don't do something to disobedience, disobedience is going to have attached to it what we call milestone number three, which is going to be deception right now. And deception is going to be a configuration of thought processes that tries to reinforce the condition of sin. I believe we said that last month. 
Why? Because of Hebrews 3 and 13 over here. It says, But encourage one another daily as long as it is called today, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. Did you know that the Bible didn't say uh, that you may be hardened by sin? Period. No. No. What hardens people is the deceitfulness that sin brings. Wow. Glory to God. Mm -mm -mm. Type that in for me. What hardens people is the deceitfulness that sin brings on you. So sin is not just going to stop at being sin. Treason is not going to stop at being treason. It comes attendant with it what the Bible calls deceitfulness. And that's what we call deception over here. So type that in for me. So sin comes attendant with it deceitfulness. What hardens is not sin. What hardens is the deceitfulness that sin brings. Type that in for me. What hardens people's hearts? which will result in blindfolds to their minds and imaginations and opportunities to receive revelation. What hardens is the deceitfulness that sin brings. And we're going to talk about how to unearth that deception by the grace of God. And that hardness is that time bomb that we talked about a few minutes ago. But if people don't do something with that deception, then they're going to get into the state over here called addiction. And it's going to be a whirlpool of sin and treason and deception, sin and treason and deception. Titus chapter 3 verse 3, that's what that scripture is saying. Foolishness, disobedience, deception, and enslavement or addictions by all kinds of passions and pleasures. That's who we were, but that's not who we are anymore in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Why? Because you died right now to your sins. And now you are alive to live a new life in Christ Jesus. I'm not addicted to sin and treason anymore. That's not who I am. In Christ Jesus, I am free. Somebody type that in for me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. In Christ Jesus, Yahushua HaMashiach, I am free. There is no bondage to sin in my life anymore. There is no bondage of addictions to my life anymore. In Christ Jesus, in the Messiah, I am am free glory to god hallelujah so that's the way into addictions but what's the way out right now well the way out is going to be what we call the arto strategy which starts with repentance what is repentance repentance is literally making a u-turn and if you're here today or you're watching this presentation at a later date you are over here right now it's a condition of the heart that says, I'm going to do something to change my story. I'm not going to let the devil take me down to hell with him. No, no. That's his business. That's his property. I am changing the story. What do I do? Well, consider how far you've fallen. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 2, verse 5, repent. Do the things you did at first. What did you do at first? Well, making Jesus the Lord of my life is what I did at first. Well, do it again. Hallelujah. <laughs> Come back to your first love. That's what repentance is. Somebody type, type that in for me. Come back to your first love. What's my first love? The first love is when I call Jesus, Yahushua, Jesus, Yeshua, whatever name your culture calls the risen Lord by, call him Lord again. That is my first love, and that's what repentance is all about. Hallelujah. How do I do that? Well, 1 John chapter 1 and verse 9. It says, if we say we have no sins, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Did you see God's faithfulness is going to be there for you? Anytime you confess and forsake it? Oh, but I've done it, I've done it 20, 20, 20 times already. God's not going to forgive me. No. He said, even if you do it 490 times in a day, I'm going to forgive you. 70 times 7. That's God's baseline for forgiveness. G Jesus told uh, the disciples when they came to him, they said, well, Master, how many times should my brother offend me and I forgive him? Seven times, Jesus? Yahushua told them, no, 70 times 7. Wow. If that's God's expectation of people, how much more will that be the Father's expectation for you? So the Father is willing to take you back. He can come home. Tell somebody, come home. 
<laughs> Hallelujah. We are talking about the movement 490 right now. The 490 movement says, come on. Come on. Yeah, type that in for me. If you're watching with me right now, if it's going to help somebody remember, don't go away from the Father. You're not too far gone to be saved. You can be saved right now. There is called a 490 movement. Hallelujah. The 490 movement says, come on. Type that in for me like that. The 490 movement says, come home. Hallelujah. Repent. Repent and do the things you did at first. Call him Lord again. Surrender all to him. Call him master. Call him the person who you're going to be taking orders from. Call him Lord again. That is the first milestone. Hallelujah. But then after doing that first milestone, it's important right now to graduate to the second milestone. And the second milestone is going to be that truth milestone that I alluded to a few moments ago. I talked about how important it is to diffuse the bomb. Hallelujah. Now, this is how we are going to defuse that bomb right now. It's the truth milestone. So you're repentant. Uh, the nature of God's back flowing into your spirit right now. You got the, the joy of your salvation back right now intact. You don't want to lose the joy of your salvation by falling back in the trees. And again, well, the way to do that is to make sure you defuse the bomb. Hallelujah. Somebody type that in for me again. Diffuse the bomb with the truth of the word of God. That's literally what special operations security forces, that's what they do. If they're really try if they're really trained in taking out bombs, they go they they have something called diffusers. They're gonna go over there to the minefields, they go they're gonna push that thing over there, diffuse the bomb. D E F U S E. Diffuse it. They're going to find where that switch is. They're going to pour water on it or do something. Pour some kind of chemical on it. Diffuse the bomb of deception by the truth of the word of God. Somebody type that in for me. Glory to God. How? Why do we know that? Well, the Bible says in John chapter 8 and verse 32, you will know the truth. And then the truth that you know is going to set you free. Hallelujah. It's not going to be rocket science. It's just simply getting getting acquainted with the truth that will diffuse the bomb of deceptions in, in my mind. That's what's going to set me free, and that's what Master Number Two is talking about. So we got to do this. We're not just going to stay at repentance forever. Yeah, we repented right now. The blood of Jesus has cleansed me from my sins, but right now I got to graduate to the truth milestone. Glory to God. So how do we do this truth milestone right now? Well, you got to understand how deception works to start with. That's the reason for this chart. A lie or a distortion or a deception is actually equivalent to truth plus distortion. That's what a lie is. So if I want to retrieve the truth from a lie, I've got to remove the distortions from my lie, and then I'm going to get the truth out of it. And that's the reason for this part on the board in here, on the screen showing, because we are going to see that there are actually some commonplace lies in the body of Christ, which people believe and hold on to so dearly. And those commonplace lies, they have distortions in them. But if I remove those distortions, I can retrieve the truth of the word of God, which is right now going to diffuse the bombs in me. <laughs> Glory to God. So let, let's look at lie number one over here. So lie number one says simply calling Jesus Lord is going to take me to heaven. Well, that sounds platitudinous. It sounds like a commonplace truth, like a no-brainer. Everybody in the body of Christ knows that. Well, so to say. Simply calling Jesus Lord is going to take me to heaven sounds like a gospel truth. And it sounds true, but it's not completely true. Why? Because of the word simply over here. The word simply over here is the distortion in this belief system. Why? Because it contradicts what the scriptures say. The scripture says in Matthew chapter 7, and verse 21 to verse 23, Not everybody who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father, or only she who does the will of my Father. So that lets us know that i got to call Jesus Lord, and I got to live to please the Father so I can make it over to heaven. Can you see that? So is it going to be completely true to believe that simply calling Jesus Lord will take me to heaven? 
Ha ha, you see now, it's not going to be true. And that's the reason Luke chapter 6, in verse 46, Yahushua says somewhere, he says, what's the point of you calling me Lord when you're not going to obey me? I tell you, tell you to do certain things, no, you wouldn't do it. Sit up, you're not going to see it. Stand up, you're not going to stand. Um, go do this, you're not going to do it. What's the point of you calling me Lord? You're not born again if you're not going to listen to me. Well, that's the truth. Now, if I believe this truth over there, guess what? I just diffused the bomb in me. <laughs> this column over here, this column to the left of this of this truth nugget, these are bomb bomb columns, man. I mean, you got I don't know if you can put a graphic in your study notes, something like that. Well, lies, bomb. Also, when you see lies, lies, well, that, that's a bomb over there. It's gonna it's gonna blow up in your face. You got to find a diffuser to diffuse that bomb, and that's the truth of the Word of God. So if you're watching with us, Luke chapter 6 and verse 46, Matthew chapter 7 from verse 21 to 23 will be a diffuser of that lie bomb. Another lie that people hold on to so dearly is that tests and trials will last forever. And that's what the devil wants you to believe. Oh, your situation is not going to change. I'm going to bring this pressure on you, and there's nothing you can do to come out of it. Why? Because my name is Almighty Devil. Live from the pit of hell. He's not an almighty devil. And besides, your God has, has put an almighty patience on the inside of you. Whoa, somebody type that in for me. You have the seed of the almighty patience. Oh, isn't that just being braggadocious? No, 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 no. you got to understand. The spiritual forces inside the recreated human spirit they trace their origin to the almighty God who created the spiritual forces. So it is not going to be braggadocious or pompous for you to believe that you got an almighty patience as a seed in your heart. Believe that. Glory to God. Somebody type that in for me. That truth of the word of God is going to diffuse, is going to diffuse that lie bomb that says tests and trials, temptations will last forever because the devil is an almighty tester, he's an almighty tempter. No, you've got the almighty patience on the inside of you. Why? Galatians 5.22. You got the fruit of the spirit: love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faithfulness, meekness, temperance, and patience. Long suffering, patience. You've got it in you, but it's there like a seed. And if it is there like a seed, you have the potential to use the almighty patience to defeat and defuse the lie bomb. Hallelujah! Somebody type that in for me. You have the patience. You have the seed. Of the almighty patience on the inside of you to diffuse the lies in the enemy. You can do it. You can do it. Hallelujah. That's the truth nugget number two over there. You know, the lie that people hold on to so dearly is, well, yielding to the pressure is just going to make it stop. Well, because this thing is not going to leave my mind. It's not going to uh, let me sleep well at night. Well, what I'm just going to do is, well, I'm just going to give in to it. Well... You may get momentary ecstasy from sin and yielding to temptations and, you know, falling into the pride of life and the lust of the flesh. Well, it just feels so gratifying. If I can just give them a piece of my mind, I'm just going to say, well, nobody's going to take me for a fool. I'm going to grit my teeth together and I'm just going to give them a piece of my mind. <laughs> you know what? If you give them a piece of your mind today, give them a piece of your mind tomorrow, and you keep on giving them a piece of your mind every day, every weekend, you're not going to have any mind anymore. So don't give a piece of your mind in response to the flesh. Put the peace of God in your mind. Hallelujah. Somebody type that in for me. Mm. Do not give a piece of your mind in response to the pressure of the enemy. Rather put the peace of God which passes understanding into your mind. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, some people when they get really excited... I'm just going to say what I'm boiling over right now with. I'm gonna, No, you keep giving pieces of your mind. You're not going to have any mind anymore. Oh, you're just trying to be funny. No, it's the truth. You see, the real problem with going to hell is the loss of the soul. So I, I may say it a little bit on a comical side, but you got to understand that the, the real agony in hell is not the flames of fire that burns people's body. The real agony in hell is the fact that they've lost their souls. 
And what that means is they've lost their minds, they've lost their wheels, they've lost their motion. What's the meaning of that? God has withdrawn the ability for them right now to choose their thoughts. Their minds are gone. Why? Because they gave little pieces of their minds over here on the side of eternity in response to temptations. Now, that's not what you're going to do. I'm not going to give the pieces of my mind to the devil anymore in response to his pressures. Rather, I am going to put the peace of God, which passes understanding, into my mind and put my mind in control. Why? Because I want to save my soul. Glory to God. The Word of God says there is no peace for the wicked. That's the reason I can say that. Isaiah chapter 48 and verse 22. I keep on falling to the lust of the flesh, lust of the highs, pride of life, thinking that the pressure is going to go away. Well, guess what? There is no peace which passes understanding in that mode. What am I going to do? Submit to the Lord. Resist the devil. He's going to flee away from you. And you will get the peace which passes understanding. That's how to use the truth of the word of God to cancel this belief system over there. I'm not yielding to pressure anymore. Oh, but if I don't yield to that pressure, I might die in the mode of resist. Yeah, yeah, choose to die in that in that mode. And for information, when you say, well, I'm not going to yield to this pressure anymore, even, even if the dead were to kill me. When you make up your mind to die, guess what? You're not going to die. Glory to God. <laughs> the devil's going to try to lie to you. Say, so if you don't yield to me, well, I'm going to kill you. No, when you do not yield, you will not die. Type that in for me. If you refuse to yield, you're not going to die. Glory to God. And then line number four over here says the blood of Jesus will completely undo the effect of a past misdeed. That sounds like a plat platitudinal gospel truth as well. Well, that's the gospel truth. Ah, isn't that going to be true? Well, it sounds true, but you know what? There is a distortion in it. The distortion in it over here is completely undo. The blood of Jesus wouldn't undo afflictions. It was designed to remove guilt away from your conscience so you can serve the living God. And in the mode of serving the living God, you are going to retrieve the glory that you traded for the loss of the flesh, the loss of the highest the pride of life in prior times. So the complete truth of the word of God in this regard is going to be, well, I'm going to plead the blood of Jesus to purge my conscience from dead works. Well, the Bible says that in Hebrews chapter 9, 1 John chapter 1 and verse 9 as well. Proverbs chapter 28 verse 13 is going to be another flavor of it. But in addition to that, I've got to repeat the test right now so I can retrieve the Father's approval on me. Why? Romans chapter 2, those who through consistency seek for glory, honor, immortality, God's going to give life. But count it all joy, my brothers, when you fall into diverse trials and temptations. Blessed is the man who endures trials and temptations, because when they have stood the test of time, they will obtain the crown of life. For all have fallen short of the glory of God. Did you see that obedience is going to be important so you can get your glory back? Hallelujah. That's the truth of the word of God. Now, the least I have on the screen over here is not completely exhaustive, but it's just going to get you started to understand how truth will diffuse lies so what I, what am i going to do you're going to go to god right now and start to cry out to god for understanding proverbs chapter 2 says if you cry out for insight raise your voice for understanding you will understand the fear of the lord so cry out to god somebody type that in for me over there proverbs chapter 2 cry out to god for the truth that will diffuse the lie bombs in my heart the Holy Spirit knows you. He knows you more than you know yourself. He knows what you believe even before you believed it. And he knows how to get you out of it if you just cry out of him. But he's not going to do anything because it's a legal God until you cry out for insight. Proverbs chapter 2. Cry out to God for insight. God, what's the lie? What's the bomb in me that needs to be diffused? The Holy Spirit is a bomb diffuser. Glory to God. Type that in for me. <laughs> diffuse that bomb hallelujah the holy spirit is a bomb diffuser hallelujah y'all may want to check check up dictionary spell of diffuse i think it's d-e-f-u-s-e -E, diffuse in other words removes the fuse from it the fuse is going to be that connector that's going to detonate the bomb diffuse d-e-f-u-s -E, diffuse that bomb the holy spirit is a bomb diffuser hallelujah 
Type that in for me. He's going to go over there like a, like a surgeon and say, well, you believe that lie. I'm going to shine the truth of the word of God. Boom, and you're going to be set free. You're going to know the truth. The truth is going to, is going to set you free. So what I have on the board right now on the screen may not be completely exhaustive to your story. But the Holy Spirit knows how to get the truth across to you. All he's asking you to do right now, cry out in sincerity. And he doesn't have to take a uh, significant spiritual exercise to cry out just at the back at the back of your heart you're walking down the stairs you're doing chores for your family you're mowing your yard over there father please give me truth open my eyes that's the prayer that moses prayed in exodus chapter 33 verse 13 teach me your ways lord that may i may be pleasing to you that's the prayer that brother paul prayed for the church ephesus in ephesians chapter 1 and verse 17 that is going to connect you to the truth nuggets that you need to set you free from lie bombs by the grace of God so this milestone is very important but bless the name of the Lord we know how to get the truth right now now right afterwards what we're gonna do right now is seize opportunities to practice obedience which God is gonna allow temptations to come your way not because it's trying to kill you but it's because it's trying to give you glory back it's trying to return your glory back to you that's the whole idea God's not gonna let you be tempted beyond what you're able to bear but it's going to let that temptation come back on you so that you can get your glory back. Now, when the temptation is coming on you, when the pressure is on you, the moment of pressure, when your emotions are inflated, it seems like i got to just do something in the flesh right now. i got to do something. Well, remember the scripture, Hebrews 4 and 16. Let us then approach the throne of God's favor with confidence or faith, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in our time of need. The word translated grace over here actually should have been translated favor, because the mercy of God is a manifestation of favor as well. So it's going to read better if we just read the scripture like this. Let us then approach God's throne of favor with confidence or faith. I'm going to put in here faith with faith uh, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in our time of need. So in other words, what I need in my moment of pressure is going to be certain favors called mercy and called grace. What's the difference? Well, grace is going to give me the spiritual energy not to fail. And mercy is going to help me if I fail. In other words, if I fail, that's not a time for me to go ahead and jump off the cliff and kill myself. No, mercy is there for you. But so it's not a fail, I need grace. So what am I going to do? I'm going to ask for both. When your emotions are inflated, ask for grace, ask for mercy. Mercy is going to work in your circumstances to even make it difficult for you to sin circumstantially. What's mercy going to do? Somebody's going to call you. Uh, your potato is going to be about to burn downstairs and you're going to have to run over there go get it, distract your mind from that pressure for a little bit until you learn how to connect with the grace of God. So mercy is going to work like that. Then grace is going to be working in your heart right now to give you that internal fortitude. That internal energy is going to give it to you so grace together with mercy will help you, position you to, to be obedient. Now when you obey, it's going to become easier right now to obey next time. So it's just like you're training your members right now to be obedient to righteousness. That's the reason this picture is on the board right now. Like you're trying to train a dog to be obedient. You are an animal and I'm going to tell you what to do. Yoke something to that dog and let the dog learn obedience a little bit. Well guess what? Yoke the discipline of the master to your life so you can be obedient wow glory to god type that in for me yoke the discipline of the master to your life so you can be obedient another thing you're going to type down for me yoke mercy and grace to your heart so you can be obedient the principles that will make for mercy and grace will be honesty and humility and faith and you crying out for it yoke these things to your life so you can be obedient and the more obedient you get the easier it is the easier it is that's the reason for milestone number three. And then we're not going to stop at the obedience milestone. We're going to go right now to the wisdom milestone. In the wisdom category right now, we're not going to be foolish anymore. We're not going to live a life of no structure anymore. Right now, we are going to embrace structure. Glory to God. Somebody type that in front. Glory to God. Wisdom is going to be equivalent to embracing structure. 
So no longer resistance structure right now, no longer being a being a foolish, being, being foolish like a child. I am embracing structure. That's what the Bible calls the wisdom of the righteous over here. Luke chapter 1 and verse 17. It says, turn the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous to make a to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Hallelujah. What's that wisdom of the righteous? Well, the wisdom of the righteous is going to be good to learn from the righteous. And the most <laughs> outstanding righteous person we've, we've seen in the history of humanity is being the Lord himself, Yahushua, Jesus Christ. He's been the, 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 the person who had a testimony. This is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. Well, we got to go in humility to Jesus and start to ask him, Sir, how did he get this testimony? And incidentally, in Matthew chapter 11, he gives us that invitation. He says, you come and learn from it. And you're going to get that same testimony over there. Go ahead and learn from the wisdom of the master on how to steer far and far away from disobedience. That's what Ma Matthew 11, 28 is talking about. And Jesus gives us the commission to go ahead and teach this kind of principles. That's the reason we're having BSTO. Matthew 28, 19 to 20. Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 3 says, the weak, the 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 scene pool is going to see danger from afar, and it's going to keep on going until it suffers for it. But the prudent is going to see danger from afar, and it's going to hide. Why? Because it's prudent, because he's wise, because he's not foolish, because it's emb embracing structure. There is no obedience without structure. Huh. Write that down for me. Anybody who tries to project to you that they are perfectly pleasing to God. And they leave without structure, they are hypocrites. They just lie to you. So tell somebody over there, don't believe all those hypocrites who try to project to you that everything is just going to be hunky-dory and there's no structure, there's no discipline in my life. And by the way, I'm perfectly pleasing to God. Lie from the pit of hell. That's hypocrisy. <laughs> There is no way you can sustain the status, status of being right with the Father without wisdom strategies. Then how do I get started with this wisdom strategies then? Well, that's the reason for the ODP. We call it Hero Smart Online Discipleship Program. How do you do that? Well, you're going to connect with us on YouTube, which is youtube.com slash Hero Smart. You click on this button over here. It's going to take you to our YouTube channel, by the grace of God. And you are going to see right over here, HeroSmart.com. Um, youtube.com slash hero smart and then you're gonna scroll down to the playlist section of that website in fact let me make sure that people can see the website over here so look at it you type in um, youtube.com slash hero smart it's gonna bring you over here to this page right over there like that and then you're gonna go to the playlist section of it the playlist section of it, you are going to see 2023 ODP, 2022 ODP. You're going to see uh, 2021 and 20. You're going to see all these different ODP sessions that we've been walking through for the past few years by the grace of God. And all you need to do is just to click one of it, and then it's going to start playing in front of you. But there is even a better way, an easier way, more convenient way to access these ODP sessions if you were to go to our website, HeroSmart.com. That's our website. You go to HeroSmart.com, and then you are going to scroll down over there a little bit. You can click on Church at HeroSmart. When you click on Church at HeroSmart, you're going to see Watch Sermons. You click on Watch Sermons over there, you're going to have access to all these ODP sessions that are on YouTube. But the beauty of coming to the website right now is you get a chance to watch the sermons together with the study notes. So you're going to see study notes over there. They're going to come in front of you. And with the study notes, you can listen to the messages and just quickly cross-reference the scriptures over there from the study notes. And then you are going to see over here something we call hashtag Church Heroes Bar, which are going to be critical nuggets, just like a couple of synopsis from the message that you can quickly just look at and will jolt you back into action. And of course, it's, it's going to be on Facebook as well. If you type hashtag Church Heroes Bar into you, Facebook, you are going to see all these nuggets over here. So I want to encourage you to go ahead and get started with the ODP right now. Um, it's available. It's on demand. It's, it is available for you over there. And if God is leading you right now to be a part of this live ODP sessions, go ahead and just register for it between December 1st and December 24th. We are going to share with you 
what we call these wisdom strategies over there that we're talking about. We're going to be talking about uh, certain concepts that will, will help you to return your heart back to the status of a child. We call that the pharmacy section of the word. We're going to be talking about the milk section of the word, which will help you to distinguish between good and evil. All these fun things are going to be there, which we learned from the ministry of Jesus himself. So this is wisdom. It is the R2 strategy which is going to set me free from the FDDA uh, path to addiction. Make sure you don't forget it. Don't forget it. This slide is going to be the very, the most important slide of this presentation. FDDA, or shall I say, like the summary of this presentation, is going to be on the slide over there. Understand the mechanics of Arto to stay away from FDDA by the grace of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Did you get something from it? Thank you for joining us. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I want to give you give you thanks for another awesome opportunity to share your word with this precious people these precious people that are going to be connecting with this with this message and with this article or with this audio father i'm asking you for grace and mercy for them O lord you are the god of all grace you are the god of all mercy and by your grace and mercy they can overcome the challenges in their lives i don't know what kind of challenges they're going through right now father please give them strength in, the, in their hearts Give them mercy in their circumstances to position them to defeat the adversary. Oh, Father, you can do this. Let virtue back up these words by your grace and your mercy. Ah, Satan, I bind you and I destroy your works. Let this people go. Let them free in the name of Yahushua. Hallelujah. Father, I bless your name. I speak your peace into their minds. The peace which passes understanding right now. Joy like a river, the righteousness of God like a mountain in their lives in the name of Yahushua. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Thank you for joining us. Remember, this presentation is going to be uploaded to YouTube. So be on the lookout for that. And we'll see you next month. By the grace of God. Shalom.